Welcome back to the classroom, this is Mr Wong. Uh, today we're going to be looking at chemical changes. We're going to try and compare the difference between physical and chemical change. And then we're going to identify some key observations that suggest a chemical reaction has occurred. So let's get started. So we talk about chemistry as the study of how matter is composed, the properties of matter, and how matter uh, reacts with different substances. Just to give a bit of context, matter in the reference of chemistry refers to anything that has mass. It could be an ice block, it could be water in a cup. A substance refers to matter with chemical and physical properties. So it has the ability to conduct electricity, it could be brittle. Those are the type of examples we can use. In terms of matter, um, there are three main states. We have solids, liquids, and gases. The difference between the three is how densely packed the substances are to each other. You can see the most densely packed particles are solids. Then a little bit of freedom is given in liquids. They start to move around a little bit, but they're still pretty much confined with each other. And then you have gas which is basically moving around all over the place. In terms of the shapes, you can also see that solids have a fixed shape, liquids don't have a fixed shape, nor does gas. Solids are quite rigid, unlike the other two. Solids have a fixed volume, volume does as well, and gas does as well. Solids cannot be compressed, liquids cannot be compressed, but gases can be compressed. So that's the difference and similarities between the three. This ability to change from one state to another, we call this a physical change. So when we change the states without changing the chemical composition. The best example here is melting ice. Now ice is made out of uh, H2O, which is just liquid water uh, in its liquid form, so H2O. So ice is solid H2O. In this case, we are having solid H2O melt into liquid H2O. So that's the difference that we're seeing here. And the reason why that's happening is because the particles are just increasing their distance of separation from each other. And so that's what's happening in this process. Other examples of physical change, you can have breaking, so it could be um, that you have a piece of wood and you just kind of break it into half or tree branch. There is also cutting, so if you cut anything in between, uh, that can cause a chemical change. So for example, we could say um, cutting your hair, that's an example. So the composition of your hair hasn't changed, nor has it changed you as a person. Uh, the only thing is, is your hair is maybe shorter. Obviously, this example in this image here, uh, the cutting is not um, this bit here. If you're using a, a high heat source to cut pieces of metal, there is a bit of an oxide layer here. So that part there would be um, a chemical change. Uh, but the sides, the parts on, or the metal on both other sides would be a physical change because it hasn't uh, renewed a different kind of chemical composition. Another example is dissolving. So it could be dissolving uh, salt in water or, um, you know, sugar in water. Uh, the way you can prove this is through evaporation. So after evaporating away the liquid, can you find residues of that sugar? Uh, that would be an example to demonstrate physical change here. So those are three examples where physical change can occur. The next we have is chemical change, and it also relates back to chemical reactions. So the idea is with a chemical change, you are forming a new substance. So I've shown this example before, but we have H2, O2, and that becomes H2O. Now obviously this is in balance, so I'll do that now. But you can see that the starting ingredients we have have essentially been rearranged uh, in the products there. So that's our products. 
that's our reactant. If there is a rearrangement of what the chemicals are bonded to, so um, change in chemical bonding, then we also have a chemical change there. Obviously, you can't see this because, uh, you know, substances, uh, molecules, atoms are really small. So there are other ways in managing and interpreting whether or not a chemical change has occurred. And we are going to start looking at some examples here, okay? So the first thing would be the production of gas. So the example we used the last couple of days was uh, bicarb, soda, and vinegar. So that creates carbon dioxide gas. You can see that with the inflation of our balloon here. So production of gas is one sign a chemical change has occurred. It could be a temperature change. So we could see an increase or decrease in temperature when uh, a chemical reaction has occurred. It could be a permanent color change. So precipitation reaction generally follows through with a change in the color. You can see uh, how it's transparent now. It's completely uh, yellow. And then obviously you have your fireworks or neon green. Um, and then you have your fireworks, which are um, also uh, different types of color changes that you can see here. So that's what we have. You could have formation of light. So in the combustion reaction, uh, that incredible amount of heat produces an incredible amount of emission of light. So that's another example. You could also have the formation of permanent solids. So this is an example of the precipitation reaction. Um, so you can see when we mix two chemicals together, not only do we get a permanent color change, we also form these solid particles in between as well. Alright, so those are the different types of chemical change or signs of chemical changes. So you have heat being released or absorbed, so that's an increase or decrease in temperature as well. But don't forget, temperature is different to heat. Uh, formation of light, gas produced, so you might have fizzing or a foul odour of some kind. Formation of a solid for example, a precipitate in solution, and the other one that wasn't shown as an example, but rusting. Uh, so rusting is forming um, oxide, metal oxide components on a piece of metal, so that's another sign of chemical change. Obviously, uh, the key point to this is you need at least two or more components uh, to really know uh, if it's a chemical change. So I might just write that down. So So you need at least two of these observations to know a chemical reaction has occurred or chemical change occurred. More so as you can see with the interpretation, uh, I could have boiling water and that's a release in heat. Um, I could turn on the light, that could be a formation of light. So you do need at least two of these observations to give you sort of a better understanding uh, that a chemical change has occurred. Okay. All right. So just to end us off, we are looking at different examples of physical and chemical changes. So I want you to try and identify which of the following is a physical and which of the following is a chemical change. I'll give you five seconds before I have a go. You can just pause the video now. Okay, so let's go through the example. Evaporation of petrol, that's a physical change. Uh, evaporation is the same, uh, in, in a way it's similar to boiling. We are just causing separation of the particles. If we were burning um, petrol, that would be a different story, which in this case, number two, burning a match, that is a chemical change. So evaporating is separating the molecules, burning any object, you're introducing oxygen gas. So you're causing oxygen gas to react with whatever you're burning. So that's a chemical. Dissolving sugar in tea. So we said that is physical because you can simply evaporate the liquid away to see the sugar. 
you can actually do that simply using uh, a bit of uh, soft drink and then uh, evaporate the liquid out of it to get the sugar. We have melting wax that is also physical because you're just melting, you haven't actually changed the composition of the wax. The last one we have is rusting that is a chemical change. Obviously because you're forming, um, to f actually have a rusting occur you also need to be exposed to oxygen as well and a bit of uh, humidity so uh, water. Okay so there is that. Awesome. Alright maybe a thing that you can try at home to test for physical and chemical change and also to look at whether or not the law of conservation of energy is true is by a little example of melting chocolate at home. So grab a bit of chocolate uh, put it in a sandwich bag melt it, uh, so put it in a bowl of warm water and melt that into, you know, liquid um, liquid uh, chocolate. And it doesn't look overly appetizing, but try that. Try and test the mass before and after. Does it stay the same? And if it stays the same, would that mean that we have obeyed the law of conservation of mass? Try that out. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson about physical and chemical changes. Uh, keep watching more videos um, and yeah, enjoy the rest of the day.